Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. In today's episode, we are continuing on with our VGC Series 10 content and we got another rental team to feature from one of you fine viewers today and this team comes from Little Moo and it is all about the Ice Rider Calyrex. So a very heavy trick room orientated team. You can see here we've got some of my favorites on the team that we've not seen too much of in Series 10, but the Snorlax there is going to be able to take advantage of that trick room takes advantage of the follow me from the indeedy as well obviously the psychic terrain there helps out a bunch and you've got a rangaroo as well which is a very interesting pokemon in series 10 with that instruct uh, move that it's got access to because uh, it wouldn't work previously on Dynamax Pokemon but now we haven't got Dynamax in Series 10 at least not for the moment um, we are able to get the most out of that move where it can if it goes after directly after your partnering Pokemon has attacked it can instruct it and then you can hit again so things like Snorlax things like Stack Attacker and the Ice Rider Calyrex are all going to really benefit a lot from that instruct. Uh, Orangaroo also is able to set up the Trick Room it's immune to Shadow Rider Calyrex with its normal typing and can hit and pick up knockouts onto it with a foul player that it has got access to. So a really nice team. It looks a little bit vulnerable to something like Zashin. So that Zashin matchup is going to be pretty difficult, I think. I think for most of the time against that, you're probably going to want to try and get the Trick Room set up and then utilize something like Indeedy with the Follow Me next to the Snorlax. Hopefully get the Belly Drum up and then you can kind of Earthquake your way out of trouble in that scenario. So you have got the Tapu Fini, which provides a little bit of offense of support against it but again you know you're going to really be really relying heavily on the trick room with this team but there are means for you to be able to get the trick room set up so hopefully we can showcase that in today's episode here is a rental code we'll have a couple of games with the team as we always do and then we'll wrap up with the rental at the end and just on a side note as well i will be streaming later on the ladder updated today so we will be streaming tonight and seeing how far we can push up the ladder so i've got a spicy team lined up for tonight's stream we'll be kicking off later on and uh hopefully Hopefully, if you are around, you'll be able to join us. So, without further ado, friends, let's get into our first match of today's episode. Okay, next up we have a Ninja, Reggie Drago, Rillaboom, Kyogre, Reggie Alecki, and Tornado. So, pretty kind of standard uh, Tornogre team, but the the inclusion of Reggie Drago here makes it a little bit different. You've got the Ninja as well, which can kind of obviously avoid any sort of fake out pressure and does put good pressure on the board itself. It does have access to something like uh, Wide God, which can cause us a few issues. Um, but I think the main thing for us to concentrate on here is trying to get a trick room set up. So we could go with something like Stack Attacker could be one for us to kind of lead with. If we want, we could lead Stack Attacker Orangaroo. Um, I think Calyrex in the back with, I think, Snorlax as well. Not bringing the Ndidi here might be a little bit of a, a problem because it'd be nice to be able to change the terrain, of course, um, from the grassy terrain that's likely to come from the Rillaboom, but... I don't know if Rillaboom, does Rillaboom come to this match? Probably it does. The fake out pressure is probably really nice. And the way to kind of manipulate the terrain obviously gives my opponent a nice means to kind of go from there. But we are just going to see the Kyogre and the Tornadus. Now where does my opponent taunt? Because that's the big question. Because the play here really is to just wide guard and then trick room. But both these Pokemon we've got have access to trick room. So do they pick which which one do they pick? If they get it wrong, we're, we're good. Hurricane just coming straight out into the Orangaroo. Are they just going for the single tar targets? No, they go for the water spout. So we get that pretty seamless trick room set up, which is pretty nice. Um, I'm surprised we don't see a taunt, but maybe expect a mental herb as well. It's all something that, you know, you've got to think about if you're you're approaching matchups against things with a trick room. Uh, and now we can just go rock slide and instruct onto the stack attacker and we get that double. Unless we see obviously a taunt into a Rangaroo this turn, um, which which definitely could be a thing. Uh, would be able that would be enough to stop us being able to get um, the instruct off. So that is a little risky this turn, of course. But with the tornadoes not gone for that taunt turn one to stop the trick room initially, you kind of think they're probably going to be forced into repositioning now. Um, so we we may get get away with this. Uh, as we see the tornadoes just go for that protect here um, and we get the rock slides off so 
Let's see if we can get rid of this Kyogre. I mean, we're going to have a double chance to flinch, which is pretty huge. And this is doing nearly 50% damage anyway with the Life Orb. So you can see the Kyogre is going to be in a real awkward position if it doesn't click that Origin Pulse button or Scald button. Because if it goes for the Water Spout again, it's just not going to have... Ah, oh, we avoid. We avoid. Oh, of course we do. <laughs> of course we do. And the Origin Pulse wiping everything out. Mm. So it can come back to bite you, um, but I mean, we lose our instruct, but it's not too bad. It's not too bad at this point. I think we can glacial lance, thunder punch, and then, or we could glacial lance and we could belly drum. That's the option. The, the problem is belly drumming right now is uh, is not ideal because. Um, the Kyogre will probably take the Glacier Lance. Which is not not really what we want to have to deal with. And I think once the Kyogre's gone with that kind of threat of Origin Pulse, which hits so hard in the rain, uh, with that gone, then it frees up a bit of room for us to get the potential Belly Drum off if we want to the, the following turn. We're just a bit locked at the minute because ideally Snorlax wants to be sitting next to something like a Rangaroo on the field. And without a Rangaroo... Um, there with its telepathy ability um, it makes it harder to use something like like Earthquake but the Thunder Punch taking that Kyogre down from Snorlax which is nice and the Glacial Lance should unless this is sashed take down this Tornadus it may be sashed may not be it is not so there we go and we're gonna get that um, chilling nay boost which is always useful getting that attack boost and we're sitting in a decent enough position we've got the protect and self-destruct as well the next turn if we want but got to worry about things like main shell coming in which does have fake out which can disrupt a kind of flaw especially taking advantage of these trick room turns but reggie drago one of the pokemon coming out which is not too bad and then rillaboom again has got access to um fake out what we could potentially do here you know is just Go self-destruct on Snorlax and protect Calyrex. Because I think out of the two, you're probably gonna you're probably going to fake out into Calyrex. And let's uh, let's get the self-destruct gone because I haven't exploded my own Pokemon in a long time, and I can't see anything on the opposite side of the field protecting. The Reg Drago protects here. We got a pretty clean knockout the next turn with uh, with uh, Ice Rider Calyrex. So that's that's all right. Um, let's see where my opponent goes though with this fake out. That'd be the interesting thing. I can't imagine you go after the Snorlax. It has to be the, the Calyrex. It's putting so much pressure on both sides of the field there for my opponent. So it feels like the only thing that you would see um, being stopped or trying to be stopped this turn. So there's the Protect the Fake Out coming out into the Calyrex. Snorlax is going to go for that self destruct. Let's see how much damage this does. I haven't used this move in a long time. It's a lot of fun though, isn't it? Self-destruct, we protect on it. The damage is is big. Snorlax goes down. And the Reggie Drago's Dragon Energy gonna be weakened considerably. We've got enough turns of Trick Room left to kind of close this game up. We do have the threat of Grassy Glide from the Rillaboom this next turn. Reggie Drago, I would imagine, is probably scarfed. Oh yeah, maybe specs as well, because you've got Tailwind to take advantage of that. But we can glacial lance. We still got the Trick Room up. Uh, we're going to be able to, to close this one up. No way anything's surviving after that plus one attack boost that we've got with the Calyrex. So, ooh, does reveal the Protect though. That That's interesting. Grassy Glide going to come out now. Yeah, just to make sure they get some damage off. Not doing a, a, a massive amount of damage, but we are going to get another attack boost here. Um, and I think the Trick Room... Does the Trick Room end this turn? I believe it does. Uh, so we've got the option where we can just set the Trick Room up if we want, but we're probably better off just going for the Glacier Lance uh, just to pick up the knockout onto the Reggie Drago. Like I say, the, the Dragon Energy is has been considerably weakened. There's no specs on there either. Um, so we don't really have to worry about being knocked out. We're not going to get knocked out by a Draco Meteor either. I wouldn't have thought from this range. Um, so the Glacier Lance should lock up the game for us, but uh, I do like... Reggie Drago as a Pokemon it is interesting. It's just really kind of hamstrung by the, the fact that it's got a very small move pool. It doesn't have much coverage. So you're kind of 
you're really kind of relying on your dragon type attacks so anything fairy is just gonna blow through you you know uh, it doesn't really have coverage outside of dragon type attacks or very much anyway we do see the dragon pulse come out it's gonna hit pretty hard but we should take this uh, yeah just about calorex is a, a big big old horse beast so can take that pretty comfortably and uh, we do pick up a win which is nice so the team doing all right here um like i said the team is it it's very reliant on trick room but if you can get the trick room up and you can kind of make the use of your trick room turns then you know you can really overwhelm your opponent quite quite quickly you've got a lot of options to kind of really punish turns as well with things like self-destruct with belly drum on the snorlax in particular and the orangaroo with the instruct as well if you can get that into play then you can really take advantage of it but uh nice way for us to kick off and we'll jump into our next match of today's episode <laughs> next opponent is playing a team of incineroar suicune reshiram serena togekiss and ditto very interesting team i really like the look of it here we've got some redirection support for things like the rest Room, things like setting up Tailwind on Suicune from that Togekiss. Uh, you've got obviously support from the Serena blocking any sort of fake out. Got Intimidate from the Incineroar there. And then you've got the Ditto which can pretty much transform into anything. We've got to be careful around that because I think the fact that it could transform into our own Orangaroo and then start instructing their side of the field. It worries me slightly. I think the one thing, the big takeaway here is though that their main form of speed control is uh, Tailwind. Uh, primarily from that Suicune um, so if we can set a trick room up we're going to be in a, in a good spot we could go in DD stacks I think Calyrex and we just got Orangaroo we could, I'm kind of tempted to go Snorlax as well but I feel like Orangaroo in the back to kind of come in with that instruct might be enough to kind of push push us over the line uh, if we need to to kind of close this one up and also before we get into this game i would just like to say if anyone does have a rental team uh it doesn't need to be a, a massively successful rental team it can be a fun rental team that you put together that you'd like to see featured on the channel uh, i have no qualms about that i would be very grateful for any sort of rental teams passed over and to feature them and play them on the channel because i think it's a really nice way to showcase other trainers and um, teams that they've put together and their ideas of what they've been playing on the ladder in series 10 and you know what this team is a lot of fun and we're having a great time with it today so it's a good example and uh, if you are hesitating at the minute hopefully this is enough to convince you to us uh, to send something over in the comment section below Okay, we've got the Indeedee um, and the Stack Attacker out against Incineroar. We've been intimidated and then we've got Serena as well. It's a pretty easy, uh, like, follow me trick room for us, really, you know. Um, they've not really got a way to, to prevent that. Now, they could double... We are trick rooming, right? Yes, we are trick rooming. That is the thing we want to do. Um, now, they could just probably parting shot with Incineroar. So, they've got that... Oh, they go for the fake out into the psychic train, not realizing that that is an option for us. Um, okay, that's a little bit of a shame for my opponent, but we do see the high jump kick come out from the Serena into Indeed. We take that pretty well. And now we've got a nice opportunity where we can go for uh, the follow me again and just rock slide. And hopefully that will then allow Indeed to go down. Uh, it protects Stack Attacker for a turn as well. And we potentially get some decent damage on the board and start taking advantage of these trick room turns. Um, the beauty about stack attacker as well under a trick room is as well, you know, it's got that, it's got the slowest rock slide in the game. But under a trick room, fastest rock slide in the game. So you're going to be able to, to potentially pick up flinches and things like that um, with the attack as well, just having that speed boost. And if you can get something like a Rangaroo in next to it, then you know you can get that double double flinch chance every turn on on both opposing uh, targets which is always nice um and the odds just fall a lot more into your favor by doing that you know so indeed you going for that follow me again the worry here would be obviously if the uh the the incineral takes down indeedy and then Serena's free to, to land a high jump kick onto Stack Attacker. But we do see the flinch there, the high jump kick coming out again. Um, and we get a little bit fortunate. But like I was talking about with the, the, the rock slides, the flinches, you've got to take them when you get them. You're putting yourself in the, the, the position where that is a possibility, right? So you can take those flinches when you can because you know for a fact your opponent would if they got the opportunity to. Now we're bringing Calyrex. 
The nice thing here is that the um, the Incineroar's out on the field at the minute, so the Intimidate, the only Intimidate my opponent's got on their team is out, so it makes it difficult for them to, to reposition, and we can punish any sort of switch-ins. Maybe the Suicune comes in on the Incineroar slot here, but again, it's going to take a combination of Glacial Lance, Rock Slide, it's going to put it into a little bit more of a precarious position, where again, the following turn after that, we do have Trick Room active, where it's still going to be, you know, Potentially, ooh, what have we missed? Don't say it's that Incineroar. It is the Incineroar, no. We don't like that. We don't like missing Incineroars with rock slides. We're kind of getting a, just desserts for getting that flinch the last turn. We get the Glacial Lance, which will mean that uh, the Serena is going to be going down here. Um, but it's likely we see a Flare Blitz from this Incineroar. And it not being intimidated as well, it's going to hit pretty hard. We do get the, uh, the Chilling Nair boost, which is uh, always good, but... A flare blitz here is going to be very dangerous, but we take that pretty well. I mean, Calyrex is is an absolute beast. The the burn there is not ideal. It does proc our uh, a weakness policy. The burn is pretty horrible, to be honest. That uh, weakness policy boost does just negate the burn damage. So we're kind of still on plus one technically from that that uh, attack boost that we've got from the chilling chilling near uh, ability, but. The burns put us a little bit further behind than what we wanted because ideally at this stage we want to be just clicking buttons and picking up knockouts but it's going to be a little bit more difficult than that. So the trick room's still up though so we're all right we'll just check we've got two more turns of trick room yeah so we're sitting sitting in not a bad spot we just need the stack attacker to be on point with these rock slides. Now a rock slide and the glacial lance should take down the rest room Rock Slide should take down the Incineroar. I mean, Glacial Lance will take down the Incineroar. We are seeing it switch out at this point. Um, maybe Suicune? No, Ditto. Okay. <coughs> so, Ditto coming in. It is going to copy our Glastria. But it's not going to enjoy taking a Rock Slide. Um, for starters, we may see the Rest Room here protect to stall out these Trick Room turns. No protect though. So, we might be able to pick up a double knockout here because, well... Mm. I would have expected the rock slide to do a little more. I guess we are intimidated though, so same much as does plus one. I'd imagine it to take down the rest room. Yeah, it takes down both. So now the the incineroar to come in. Psychic terrain still in effect. It can't utilize that 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 fake out there, and um, you can see that it's you. With this team in particular, I feel like you're on a timer straight away with the trick room now if your opponent plays well you can stall out the trick room and can deny that second trick room setup then the team can start to fall apart pretty quickly i feel so you've got to be very kind of uh you've got to be on the ball with taking advantage of the trick room turns for one um as the intimidate and the incineral come back onto the field but this is pretty much it now we can just rock slide and high horsepower and there isn't very much my opponent could do we could double trick room here but it's likely that well the thing is if we knew the 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 pose and Pokemon had protect, that would make sense to do because they're going to protect on the last turn of trick room. We double trick room here and just lock the game in. But the fact is that they've only got fake out as a means to uh, to kind of slow us down and probably no protect. It doesn't make much sense to go for that play because we'll just end up losing something. Even though we probably do end up with our trick room set up anyway, uh, although we wouldn't because Incineroar will just take down Calyrex. So anyway, good game to my opponent. We get two nice games in with the team today. Both uh, pretty similar in respect to how reliant we are on the Trick Room, how we need to get it set up. But we got to see a good mix of all the Pokemon in the team. And we'll uh, hop over now and remind you all of today's rental code. Okay, friends, here is today's rental team. And it is from Little Moo. So big shout out to Little Moo for passing this over the team and putting this together and sharing it. And I hope if you do try it out, it is a lot of fun. I think it's got some really nice features to the team. Obviously, the Snorlax with the belly drum there is a big one. And and uh, as I say, we haven't really seen too much of that in Series 10. But uh, if you want a bit of fun on the ladder, this is definitely the team to do it with. The Ice Calyrex is a brilliant Pokemon. It's so powerful. And when you combine it with Orangaroo, um, with that Instruct, it can be really overpowering. Especially with the Snorlax as well. When you get that Belly Drum and you've got that, that Instruct next to you to just really take advantage of Earthquake or, you know, Self-Destruct even. Uh, or Thunder Punch. It's really, well, you're not going to take 
advantage of self-destruct with with instruct are you that, that just doesn't happen but you know the other two options are there a uh, really nice team though and as i say if you do try it out i hope you enjoy it. let me know down in the comment section below and like i said if you have a rental team that you'd like to see featured on the channel we've only got a month left of series 10 so there is a lot of time for us to feature teams we've got a bunch of them lined up which we'll be doing next week on the channel obviously we'll be streaming later on today uh with and uh, with the team that i put together which uh hopefully will be kind of pushing up the rank ladder which will be a lot of fun because i haven't done that in a while so hopefully see you there and have a great rest of your day whatever time of day it is wherever you are in the world and uh, more importantly than anything just make sure you take care of yourselves and i'll see you all for another episode very soon so until then friends take care and bye bye